A third problem, which may not sound too much, but may in fact be the biggest stumbling block, is that, as I see society, the natural order of events is for people to group themselves together in small contiguous units, not in big regional groupings. People voluntarily associate in small groups, not in large groups. In other, uh, but, on the other hand, the whole trend of a world order is towards unification and regional groupings. In other words, you're going in, in two different directions. The planners are trying to impose large regional units, but the natural trend order within the society is towards smaller groupings. And I suspect that as more people begin to see what is happening, it's antagonistic to their own interests, that the resistance will also increase. So let me emphasize, and I'm getting near the end, one point. That the battle for American independence can only be won with facts, and they have to be accurate facts. I do not believe that the American people want to abandon the Constitution, or free enterprise, or individual freedom. I don't believe the American people want such things as internal passports, and hundreds of billion dollar energy programs, forced busing, backbreaking taxation. I don't think they want it. Further, the establishment no longer has credibility. I've lost it because it's ignored too many facts, it's lied, it's distorted. And that is your opportunity. Present the facts at the third level. But let me warn you, to retain the credibility, you've got to be 100% accurate 100% of the time. If you get it wrong once, you've lost your audience, your enemies will never let you forget it. To make one mistake is instant loss of credibility. Sometimes it's very tempting, I think, to overstate the case, but don't do it, because you can't do it and win. And let me leave you this morning with, I think, the moral of my story, what I've tried to write over the last decade. We tend to emphasize the obvious. We can recognize the planners and their socialist friends. They're directly identifiable. To give you one example, Attorney General Levi says he's going to introduce internal passports, and he knows it's unconstitutional. He says so. Now that, to me, is an obvious enemy. I don't sleep, wondering what he's going to dream up for me next. But more important, perhaps, are those behind the scenes, what I call the subsidizers. Those who provide the technology, the financing, the political power, the political thrust for world dictatorship. Look at the subsidizers. Look, for example, at big business. Big business supplied technology both to Hitler's Germany and to Soviet Russia, and back both at the same time, and Roosevelt for good measure. Look at the academics. We're more interested in promoting a new world order than in promoting freedom. And that's what they should be doing. Look at those organizations who promote anti-communism, but always stop short at identifying and pointing out those who subsidize and make possible the onset of a world of socialist state. So my moral today is the moral I would like to leave with you is that planners could not exist without subsidizers and both are equally dangerous to what you hold to the truth. Thank you.